Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. Big one today, the April financial review. My eighth month as a full-time reseller, if you can believe. I've been documenting my entire journey over the last eight months, and I do this video on a monthly basis, but I did wonder if you guys wanted to continue seeing this, but yet a 92% response rate from you guys saying yes, you did. So here it is, guys. There's a lot of information to cover off today. We're gonna to be looking at the monthly revenue. We're gonna be looking at my fees for the month as well. Some inventory that I purchased, the sales platform performance, performance and a final cash flow position. Guys, if you want to learn a thing or two about how to sell on eBay and on Facebook Marketplace, this is what I do every single day. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button, give this video a like as well. It'd be very much appreciated. Let's dive into the first one, my monthly revenue. I've been able to sell 213 items in total for the month of April. That was six less items than the month of March, as you can see there on the column on the right-hand side. My total revenue was up, thankfully. $114 increase, $9,219.81. So really happy with those numbers there. Average sale price dipped slightly by 41 cents down to 33.76. My cost of goods that actually went on to sell was $180 less, $1,503. And my profit margin actually stayed the same at 75%. So guys, this was a very interesting statistic to have a look at. The fact that I was able to sell just six less items, a very comparable figure to what it was the previous month of March, to increase my revenue only slightly to $114. What this tells me is my numbers are very steady and they're very consistent. I'm doing the same things every day, week on week, month on month, and they are bringing in a similar result. So consistency does win. That is probably the big thing that I've got here. For the last two months, I've been able to hover around that $9,000 worth of revenue. And to be honest, that's pretty much my goal revenue figure. If I can get 10 grand a month, that would be fantastic. And I'll tell you what, I'm not too far off. So consistency pays. That's the biggest thing that I've learned out of my revenue total for this month. So if we have a look at the sales platform performance now, you'll actually see that Facebook has been cut in half. I've only had 10 sales come in on Facebook Marketplace. Now, for you guys watching the channel very early days, you would know that I put a lot of time and attention into my Facebook Marketplace, and that has considerably dropped away. eBay has become my number one selling platform, and I've really battled with the cross-listing element of Facebook Marketplace due to the time factor. I'm just simply not doing it. I've got 198 sales on eBay. That is my number one source, and my website as well. Well, I've been continuing to tick away with a few listings on there and I've been able to get five sales on the website. So like I said, guys, it's been real truly a focus on eBay. That's where I'm putting all of my time and attention on a daily basis. Facebook has suffered as a result of that. And I'm the biggest advocate for Facebook Marketplace than anyone. I absolutely love it. And I think for anyone being a beginner out there wanting to get into it, you should be putting 100% of your time onto Facebook and probably not even doing eBay. It's a great way to make money. There's no fees associated and I do swear by it. Yet I'm trying to build a business and I'm trying to reach a few more people and therefore I feel like I need eBay. But um, very interesting to see, again, another consistent month, only a difference of three sales on the eBay platform. Um, and due to obviously time and attention, a lack of with Facebook, there's been a big drop off there. So uh, numbers of the sales platforms, for me, eBay is dominating. If we have a look at the nasty part of the business now, the fees, the money that you have to take out, I'll pull the table up, $1,181 in eBay fees. That was the invoice that I received for the month of April. That was an increase of $365 month on month. Postage, $2,000 for the very first time. A nasty figure to have a look at. An increase of $406 there. So my total fees for this month, guys, $3,209. An increase of $772. Now, there is justification. You're probably thinking, Matt, how the hell are you spending $2,000 on postage? Well, I've put a lot of time and attention into international postage. And that incurs a slightly higher postage rate, as you would all know. So look, I'm a big advocate for international post when you're doing eBay. I think if you're on eBay, you need to be doing international post. And because I've done that for the very first time this month, that's where I've seen that increase in overall fees. You pay a little bit more in fees on eBay and you obviously have the increase in cost as well with the actual shipment of the goods overseas. So that was the reason why it was up, 3,200. I'm not too worried about that because I know the reasons as to why. Now, when I'm talking to people about um, building a business on eBay and being a full-time reseller, one of the common things that gets neglected is people not realizing that you actually go out and buy inventory on a weekly basis. And that figure takes away from your overall profit. So it's an incredibly crucial aspect to look at. When you're looking at cash flow, how much money is going in, how much money is going out, 
your inventory is pretty much the biggest monthly out or, or expenditure that you're gonna have in a month. So I'm always very, very particular around how much I'm, or where I'm putting my money and how much I'm actually spending. So if we pull the table up and have a look at my inventory for the month of April, I spent well, I spent $1,665. That was a decrease of 714, but I purchased 271 items. So there was a decrease there as well of 62 items. Basically, I bought less than the month of March. My average purchase price, $6.00. 17 cents. So that was a decrease of almost a dollar per item, 97 cents, which is actually quite a large number. Now, my numbers around this, guys, yes, there was a decrease of 62 uh, items there. I would have potentially liked to have tried to hit around 300 items. That's definitely a pass mark for me if I'm hitting 300. So I definitely probably sourced a few less items than I would have liked to last month. Uh, the reason I've got $6.17, that is the lowest ever average cost per good. Um, I haven't been buying furniture. I've still not got a van. I've obviously had my van stolen for those of you who don't know. And therefore, I haven't been buying furniture at 50, 60 odd dollars per item. So that is why my uh, cost of goods has dropped down to $6.17. A lot of thrifted items basically is all I am buying. So uh, that's obviously helped the bottom line there with my cost of goods, but um, a very important figure, guys. You gotta know how much you're spending on inventory. Even if it doesn't go on a sell, how much of it is sitting at home? It's a very important figure to know. So that pretty much covers all bases. You've seen the money in, the money out. What is left over? What would I be taking home as my overall cash flow position? If we pull the table up, you've got the revenue there of 9,200 as I touched on. The fees overall, fees, postage and inventory, for 4,874. The balance of those two leaves me with a cash flow of $4,345. That is without a doubt the highest it's ever been from a cash flow position after eight months of being full time. So I'm absolutely wrapped with that cash flow position. YouTube income, $495. Last month it was 610. I've dropped by $115 in YouTube ad revenue. So look at 19% decrease there. It is a little bit disappointing because I'm still putting out three videos a week. I've never missed an upload and I never will miss an upload, but there's just been less views and there's been less hours of watch time and it allows me to think about things moving forward. It allows me to ask the questions, what do you actually wanna see on this channel? So you can be tuning in on a regular basis. That's the whole purpose of why I do these videos. Um, the annual salary there, as you can see, 58,000 is what it would be if it was literally every single month for the entirety of the year, I'd be on a $58,000 a year salary. That's kind of the way I like to look at it. My goals are to try and get a $50,000 a year salary. So that's exactly what's happening here with a $58,000 a month so I am very happy guys I don't really have a lot more than that around my positioning of this month it was really just doing all the little things that I talk about in my what sold videos I'm just really trying to be consistent back to that topic of revenue that I was talking about if you're just doing the daily things right you're going to overall get your better monthly annual goals ticked off so um, sure two months in a row I'm sort of where I need to be will I move out of home next month probably not quite I'd like these numbers for another month or two and I'm thinking the new financial year is when I'll be out of home which is very exciting and I look forward to bringing you that information when it does come through. But um, yeah, it's been a good month and I'm really happy about things. Everything's kind of ticking along well. Um, let me know in the comments if you do have any questions about my reselling, about your own reselling, if I can help out in any way. The whole purpose of this YouTube channel is to connect with you guys through video, on Instagram, whatever the case may be, and to try and lend a helping hand wherever possible. So reach out, let me know, have a chat, always happy to talk. Uh, until next time guys, trip to the thrift on Thursday. Can't wait for the trip to the thrift. We'll see you then.